Hey everybody, Jason here and welcome to another episode of Driver's Paddock. Today's episode is a little bit different. Behind me is a G87 M2. And before we start, I just want to ask you guys, do you like boobies? If you like boobies, make sure you keep watching. Let's go. behind me is the G87 M2 that I'm going to be driving and this is the owner's daily driver and uh, uh, weekend track car and the short list of mods is that it has brake pads, gyro discs up front, it has these beautiful Recaro podium seats, has a Zestec steering wheel and if you're looking for any adult toys make sure you check out 50 Shade Adult on Instagram. So let's hop in the M2 and uh, let's have some fun. Let's go. Let's go. There's just quite a lot actually. All the other G87s I've driven have a square setup. This one is the stock setup. Ooh. front end with the brakes really well. Manage the power on the exit. Wow. Even with the stock power, it's, I mean, let's warm up the tires a bit before I say anything, but that's surprising. Yeah, it's all understeer and then oversteer. Classic BMW, if you ask me. I've been too spoiled with all these modified cars. level one is there. Come on, get the nose in, good. Oh, wow. Barely touching the throttle. Understeer. Man, understeer to snap oversteer. So late on power, come on.
17.86. Man, I can push this harder. It's just, man, for me, it's frightening when I have entry and mid corner understeer. Oh, I'd rather have entry oversteer than mid corner understeer. But um, 117.86, that's not bad for a relatively stock car. I think I can push a low 17. But oh man, I feel like I can't excite the rear wheels early enough to get the car to rotate mid corner. The car is pushing on entry and uh, the limits of the front end are, are just not what I'm used to. Like, I mean, I think I am just too used to a square setup. I mean, I just gotta recalibrate my brain just a little bit and uh, I can go faster for sure. Let, let, let's just chill out for a second. We'll go again. Okay, guys. I don't know if you can see on the screen here, but I am out of gas. I don't know why owners keep giving me their car when it's out of gas. That's not bad. Man, I could go so much faster. I just oh, I just have to manage the front end a little bit better. Even with left foot braking, it's, it's not quite there. I'm not happy with that time. I feel like a relatively stock G87 should be doing low 17s, not mid 17s, if not a high 16. Anyways, these tires are pretty much done. Let's go take a look at them later. Alright, that was fun though. Those boobies are really adding a lot. You know what? It's probably... Have you seen the double Ds on the front of this hood? Okay, they do add 50 horsepower each, so a total of 100 horsepower. But each booby actually weighs 500 pounds. So I have an extra 1,000 pounds on the nose of the car. So that's an excuse as to my performance. So everybody, it's the next day and honestly, I was so mesmerized by those double Ds that I forgot to give my thoughts on the G87. So here we are. And let's start off by saying that I am a huge fan of it. And I am an F87 M2 competition owner, and I want nothing more than the next gen BMW to be amazing. But there are some things that I don't like. And let's talk about that first. First of all, the steering. There is virtually no steering feel and it drives like a video game. Uh, the power steering is, you know, basically taking care of everything. You don't feel very much. But there's also a benefit of that where, um, you know, for example, if the car is sliding, you can be pretty lazy with the steering. You can let go of the steering wheel, you know, let it come around. Um, you know, the caster plus the power steering helps this, the wheel center. Um, there's advantages to less steering feel. We can talk about that more later. And the throttle in Sport Plus, I find, is a little bit too twitchy. Like giving just a little bit of throttle is not, it's not linear. It's just giving me a ton of throttle, ton of power right away when I just touch the throttle. So, I mean, it's adjustable as well. There's comfort, there is uh, Sport and Sport Plus. Unfortunately, I had it on Sport Plus. The brakes were really good. 
uh, they're not stock. They're they have the 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 car has pads and fluids. However, I experienced a very similar issue in my F87, which I had to tune out, where the brake pedal feels a bit inconsistent. It feels like the brake booster is constantly boosting the brakes as you go, and there's a few things wrong with that. One, it's inconsistent, and two, um, it hides some of the brake fade. And um, again, in my own personal car, I turned off the brake booster, and um, I have AP brakes, and it's much, much better. It's very consistent, and it doesn't hide the brake fade. Next. Although the G87 hides its weight really, really well, it's 3,800 pounds, but it doesn't feel like 3,800 pounds. However, weight still matters. And I say that because if you're going lap after lap after lap and you own the car, consumables matter as well. You're going to go through much more tire, much more brake pad, rotors, that sort of thing. And there's going to be more wear and tear, more heat generated as a result. And so even though I drove four laps with the stock power and stock tires, um, it felt like the tires were, were given out and, um, uh, you know, we did a warm up lap, did, you know, 19 to feel out the car. And I did two back to back 17s, but you know, weight does matter. And you do feel it in those fast transitions and in the slow corners. However, in the fast stuff, it, it feels extremely nimble and you can really rotate the car on throttle. And as such, you don't really feel like the car is uh, super heavy or slow to change direction. Next, I mean, this is really subjective. The styling, it's really growing on me. However, I don't feel like it's a, uh, you know, a, a look for myself. Um, it's growing on me, but you know, that's just something that's subjective. Also like the infotainment system, I feel like it's a bit busy with all the, you know, the bars revving and then, you know, the screen, there's so many apps, um, a bit confusing, but I'm sure if I owned the car, I would uh, get to know it. Otherwise, guys, the G87 is an absolute beast. It has dual personality, I find. Like, if you want to grip drive it, you absolutely can, and it's an absolute beast. Or if you want to hoon and slide it around, it does that as well. Also, the chassis is so refined and so comfortable. They've done something really amazing with the suspension. It's amazing on the road as well. And let's talk about stock form. And I know this car isn't quite stock. Well, stock is stock. I know that. But this is the most stock G87 that I've driven. And, you know, it has pads and fluids. It has weight reduction because of the seats. Um, but add some weight back in with the cage. You know, uh, by stock, I mean stock power, stock suspension, stock tires, that sort of thing. And, um, you know, like most BMWs, they do understeer on entry and mid corner. And they do oversteer on exit. And I think the fact from factory, they do dial some of that understeer in to, you know, make sure people don't crash and kill themselves. Uh, however, I, I have driven G87 with the square setup and it is incredible. It is so good. Basically, if you can manage the front, uh, the entry understeer, you have so much mid corner to exit adjustability through the throttle. What I mean by that is more throttle means the car will yaw and rotate more. Less throttle means it straightens out or you can counter steer. And there is such a wide range of adjustability uh, to have fun. And it's very safe, very predictable. I love that about uh, the F series and the G series. And it's even crazier in the G series because on my next point, the 10 stage traction control is amazing. But if you're a novice driver, just keep it on. If you're And as you improve, just dial it back, dial it back, dial it back. And level two or three is kind of like the sweet spot where you can go really fast. It really manages the power on the exits. And uh, I wish I used more of that. Um, you can see me sliding around everywhere um, in my hot laps. I definitely would have gone faster if I just used a little bit more of that M traction control. It's really good. And if you think back a few years, if you want that level of motorsport grade traction control, you have to go to Mtron. You have to go to Motec standalone ECU. But now it's in Chevy, you know, Chevy has the PTM. BMW has this amazing 10 stage traction control. It is really, really good. And onto the differential. It's definitely better than in the F series, um, where I feel like, you know, both are electronically controlled differentials. And uh, on coast and on braking, they're open. And when you turn in, it feels very free. That's good. As soon as you get on the power, the ELC starts to lock more and more. It starts to ramp. Um, and I feel like in the F series, it's a little, there's a little bit more of a delay. I'm talking like maybe quarter of a second, half a second. In the G series, it's much faster, but you still do feel some of the delay. I mean, I'm comparing to like 
a well-tuned 1.5 way where there's literally no delay but it's still really good in the g series you put on that traction control as well you, you factor that in and you factor in the um you know the car's obviously taking in yaw rates and wheel speed sensor information and steering input it's uh, information throttle position uh sensors it really works together i feel like it's a really good package and that s58 is crazy it's more linear than the s55 it doesn't have a huge torque um shove that can really unsettle the car sometimes it feels more linear for sure of course it's highly turbocharged but from 3000 to like 5500 it feels really really good really really linear it does die off a little bit but it's amazing and you can always just get it in the right gear with that eight speed zf it's really really good and i can't believe that these cars tune do like 10 second quarter miles it's insane super super fast so very good job bmw on that s58 what a monster the ZF is super smooth and probably just as quick as the DCT, right? And the DCT is more engaging and more visceral, if you will. However, it's quite jerky in the automatic mode at low speeds. Um, the ZF is super smooth, super fast. Uh, not as engaging, but really, really good. Stock suspension. It's pretty damn good. It handles the high speed compression and rebound really well. So it handles all the bumps, the curbs really, really well. I feel like it keeps the tire on the ground. BMW has really tuned it very well. But I do find that the low speed rebound is a bit too slow. Maybe it's because of the weight of the car. Those fast transitions like through the S's or through the hairpins, you do feel uh, some of the weight of the car. Well, the G87, what an amazing car it, it is so good on the street so good on the track dual personality you can slide it around you can go fast and lightly modded with brake fluid pads maybe an alignment that's all you really need and if you want to go more next steps perhaps going to a square setup coil overs seats maybe and i say square setup because again it just helps to manage some of that dialed factory dialed in understeer and if the if you can again manage the front end on entry BMWs have beautiful mid corner and exit adjustability through the throttle. And that's why I love them so much. So the question is, am I selling my F87 for a G87? Well, I don't think so. And I have a few things planned for my F87 M2 competition. You can follow along, I have a video on this channel about it. Um, but it's getting a direct search differential amongst other things. And I'm really excited for how that car is going to play out. If you ask me if I have the same power as a tuned G87 would, I think my F87 is going to go faster. I'm not really sure how to end this video and it was so such a blast driving the G87 and I'm so happy uh, that I got that opportunity again. Uh, but I'm a simple man. Maybe we just end this video with boobies. Catch you on the next one.